Hi, this is Stephen Gregg, and I'm talking about the mindset of a trailblazer. Um, finishing my lesson that I started a, a little while ago uh, about my life, about what's been going on, and and how God's been, you know, working on my life. And you know, I'm in chapter 12, and we're going to be talking about, you know, you know, what happened after we started learning about the Bride of Christ. Because after we learned about the Bride of Christ, everything changed. Um, so after we now start studying this message and learning about how the bride works and how the Sabbath worked and everything, you know, it was interesting because we started studying the Bible and, and God sat us on the couch in our house every single day for about three years. So literally we were in my house looking at scriptures, looking at videos online, looking at, the, at different people that God has been inspiring different parts of the scriptures. And it was really challenging because we were learning how to discern between biblical fact and all the man's opinion or their opinion that they put in the middle of it or the people that we were watching on videos, sometimes they would have a lot of good biblical principles, but then they'd add their own opinion and ideas in the middle of it. So it was really tough, you know, being able to discern through that, but God was helping us weed through what was biblically facts and man's opinion. And so that was really encouraging. And it was really encouraging because during that time we had a few baptisms. We had Scott, Gus, Gustavo got baptized and, and George. George was one of the first people to, to come along and get baptized. And we also had a lady named Patty and, and Janet. And then we had Robert um, get baptized and, and Doris. Um, she got baptized with us. And, and it was really encouraging because our ministry started to grow just a little bit here, here locally. Um, and it was, it was interesting. It was really cool because we were just teaching them what we were learning. You know, we didn't know everything at that time, of course, but we would teach what we knew. And God would bless it because they saw it. And we, would, um, we even did a message one time. We had about... Uh, we had about 18 people at a, at a room. We had rented a room that held 300. We had invited a lot of people to come, and we broadcasted it live um, to people all around the world. But only about 18 people came. But those faithful ones that we just talked about were, were there, and it was really encouraging. So it was a really encouraging time. But during the same time, um, I was going through some health issues because um, I don't know why I was going through the health issues because what happened, I had a root canal. And that root canal, um, I guess the guy didn't do it right, and, and it kind of poisoned my bloodstream. And my, I was really healthy. I was about 220 pounds, all muscle, you know, healthy. And then all of a sudden, I started losing weight. And I didn't realize I was losing weight, and I was starting to lose my breath and everything. And I got really sick. And I shrunk down to about 170 pounds at that time. My wife noticed that all my clothes were hanging off me. And I didn't know what was wrong with me, so we went to a bunch of doctors, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And they told me to blow in this tube, and I did. I blew in the tube, and the lady said, okay, he's at 65% or 68%. And I didn't know what that meant. So the doctor said, okay, tomorrow we have, we're going to do a little biopsy on your chest. And I said, okay, no problem. So I went in to do the biopsy, and they said, uh, they said okay, well, you're going to stay here overnight because we need to make sure that you're okay. And I said, okay, no problem. So I went upstairs, and I was in, in a room, and they quarantined me off, and I didn't know why. But come to find out that you know, when your lungs are down to 68%, you're detrimental. You're pretty much walking dead because at 88%, you're detrimental, but I was at 68%. But I didn't know I was that sick because my lungs were basically failing at that time or, or doing, you know, it was really hard for me to get oxygen into my bloodstream. And organ parts were, you know, saying that they could stop working. So I was in the hospital for three days then, and then after that I came out, and then a couple months later I got Bell's palsy. My whole right side of my face went paralyzed. Um, I had you know, viral meningitis. So I got really, really sick and I was in the hospital again and then I got pneumonia. And then that, I got better and then at the end of the year I got pneumonia again and then I got pneumonia again and I got pneumonia like four or five more times over the next couple of years. So I was in and out of the hospital over and over and over, really sick. Still trying to work, you know, because I'm an independent contractor and I had started a business called Business Sales Expert and which is a sales training and sales coaching business and so I had to go and try to still work while learning the scriptures, while being sick and, and unhealthy there for probably three or four, two or three years, maybe yeah, about three years. And it was a really difficult time in my business. It was difficult in my business. It was difficult spiritually speaking because of my health. My health was a mess. Um, I didn't know what to do. I was going to all kinds of different doctors trying to find out what can I do to, to get better. And then... Um, you know, I took a turn for a better, for a little bit there. I started doing business again, and I, I did this event, I remember, in 2016. God had been wanting me to, to teach the message and, and teach the things I had been learning for the last three, four years. But, you know, I kind of didn't want to teach it. But I remember I was doing this business event, and it was on, on the 
what was that, the 13th of December, I remember 2016. And I was at the hotel and I spoke for nine straight hours and I did a training. And it was great, generated some good income from it. But then two days later, I started getting the flu-like symptoms. And I was like, man, I'm getting sick. And my wife said, you need to go to the hospital. So I did, I went to the hospital. And when I was there, the doctor came out and told my wife that, you know, my kidneys were failing and my lungs were failing. So two major organ failures simultaneously. That means you're pretty much toast at that point. You're, you're done. And, you know, my wife was really scared. I had shrunk down to now 165 pounds. And I was so skinny and so unhealthy. And I was literally almost dying. And I just remember laying in the bed. I remember laying in the hospital bed. And the doctor took all these tests and stuff. And he came in. He goes, Stephen, I don't know what to do. I don't know what, what's going on in your body. But your two major organs are, are failing simultaneously. And I don't really know what to do about that. And so I said, okay. I said, well, I think I have an idea what to do. And so I, I felt like I was kind of like Jonah. You know, because God had been calling on me and tugging on my heart to start teaching this message about the kingdom of God. And I was running from him. I was scared to do it because I didn't think people were going to follow it. I didn't believe anybody would want to listen to the message. So I was scared. And basically, I chose not to do it. I was too busy to focus on business and not focus on the mission that God wanted me to do. So I remember that day I, I, I sat up, the doctor left out of the room, and I, got, I was in my hospital uniform. I got my cell phone out and did a selfie. And I went live on Facebook. And I said, you know, you guys, I just want to let you know I'm in the hospital. And my doctor told me I have two major organ failures that, that's happening. But I believe that the reason why this is happening because I feel like I'm in the belly of the fish um, like Jonah was. and Because I've been running from God. And, and I need to start teaching this message of the kingdom of God to the people that need to hear it. And I promise you, God, right now on camera that I will do this message. I will teach this message to whoever wants to listen. And I won't be afraid anymore. I'm not going to run from you anymore. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. That's what I'm going to do from this point on. And I finished doing my Facebook live message and I turned it off. And it was, I went to sleep. And the next morning, the doctor wheeled me in to take some more x-rays and more tests and everything to find out what was going on. And then I came back to the room and I was in there. And then lunchtime came. And the doctor came in and said, you know, um, I just want to let you know that I don't know what's going on inside your body. But what I do want to say is that your lungs have repaired themselves and your kidneys are pretty much back to normal. So you're going to be able to leave tomorrow. And I said, thanks, Doc. I appreciate that. And, and I knew exactly what happened. I knew God had went inside and, and does what he does. And he healed me. And I was so grateful because I knew what he was doing. I knew he was calling me to do something I was afraid to do. And... And teach this message because it was so different and so uh, abnormal to teach people about the Sabbath the way I was doing. And I didn't think anybody wanted to follow, but I was so grateful that God spared me, spared my life. Um, and gave me another opportunity. And I promised him from that day on I would teach this message to whoever was willing to listen. And I did. And I came out and I um, started teaching the message of the kingdom of God. And, and I started teaching it to people. And I, from that day on, I've been teaching the Sabbath day. Uh, based on God's calendar, and I've been teaching um, the message of the kingdom of God to hundreds upon hundreds of pastors. Uh, and right now, uh, I'll be telling you here shortly, but on the next video, but it has been unbelievable what God has done. I mean, God has taken this message around the world like nothing I could have ever imagined. And at the time when I came out of that hospital, I just wanted to be able to survive. I just wanted to be able to live for my kids and see my kids get older. And that was in 2016. And from that point on, nothing short of amazing from that point on. We saw so many blessings from the day I made that decision. Um, it's pretty incredible. And, I, and I'll be sharing with that with you on the next video. So, you know, first of all, thank you for listening. And, you know, ring the bell below and, you know, subscribe to our channel so you can get all the rest of the messages here. Uh, again, thank you for listening, and, and I'll be back with you on the next video.